I thank our Lord and Savior Jesus for this mighty day. I thank him for the fact that I'm able to give this message to the country, to the nation of Kenya, and also to the nations of the world. The Lord has been talking to me about his second coming now. He's talked to me for a long time now, beginning 11th of November 2003. Till now, he keeps talking to me about the second coming, the mighty second coming. And the Lord Jesus is coming back soon. 11th of November 2003, he did show me his mighty second coming. And he showed me what the day of the Lord looks like. And I want you to know, I want the listeners and the viewers to know, that the day of the Lord is a mighty day of judgment. It's the day when our Lord will come down in mighty glory. The sun disappears, the moon disappears, and the stars fall out. And then immediately darkness grips the earth. And with tremendous glory, the Lord comes leading the armies of heaven and all the heavenly hosts. And when his feet steps behind the city of Jerusalem, the Mount of Olive, it causes a quake. The earth trembles. It's a mighty tremble of the earth. Like you see, it's written in scriptures, like in the book of Zephaniah. The Mount of Olive will tremble and split. And so what we'll have is some deep valleys and the waters will begin flowing down through the valleys. And the voice of the Father from my right hand side said in that mighty visitation, He lifted me off the earth. And as the Lord was coming down to touch down on earth behind the city of Jerusalem, He said, look, Jerusalem is the center of the earth. And the city of Jerusalem appeared above all the other cities. I could see the lakes, the oceans, and all the other cities of the world, but Jerusalem was much above them. And then what the Father did, he showed me Jesus coming back after the sun, the moon, and the stars had fallen out and disappeared. Bwana alinituma hapa aliniambia kuna hukumu na kuja hapa tusipo tubu dhambi zetu. Okay. Yes, sasa nafaa tu tubu dhambi. Sawa. Yeah, tume, tumeshakuwa watu wenye dhambi sana hapa Kenya. Si ndio una, unafahamu hiyo? Unafahamu. Yeah, unaona madhambi nyingi hapa sasa hizi, si ndio? Yeah. Unaona watoto hawana chakula chakula. Okay. Wametupwa sasa. Na ukiona okay, mambo kama haya yanatendeka hapa nchini, mm. unajua mambo yashakuwa mabaya kabisa. Sasa kile bwana anataka hapa tu tubu dhambi zetu, okay? Tutubu dhambi zetu nani? Tuachane na mambo za uh, dhambi za uzinzi na uongo na hizo zote sasa hizo. Sasa bwana ana uchungu sana hapa. Bila nionyesha ile nini tsunami kabla hajafanyika, sasa acha nionyesha hiyo tatumeka na kuja hapa Kenya, okay? Jesus loves the world. And the day of the Lord much as the day of the glory of the Lord coming or the establishing of the kingdom of God in heaven in on heaven and on earth, it is a day of judgment. And the most important thing we can do is prepare for the day of the Lord. Okay, there's need to repent. You know, we need to repent. The Lord has been talking to me about this country, all the way, uh, the earthquake that will hit Nairobi, and also Kisumu, and also the Asian tsunami before it happened. I did the same thing. I was walking down the streets telling people until it happened. So we need to repent. Jesus loves us so much. There's a lot of sin in our country today. I'm sure you agree with me. A lot of sin in this country, right? We have so many children here, street children. You see those guys? We've thrown them out. Do you agree with me? We need to repent. And Jesus loves you. I want your viewers and saints to understand one thing. He sent me to another city called Puerto Escondido in Mexico, Pacific Coast. And he told me, tell them to repent in Christ Jesus, otherwise tomorrow at the same time there's going to be an earthquake. That was the 6th of August, 2004. And exactly on the 7th of August, the next day, there was an earthquake because the city had not repented. Now the city of Puebla in Mexico, he has shown me tremendous earthquake coming to hit the Catholic Church. The cathedral in Mexico, I have seen an earthquake split it open. I have seen earthquake hit several parts of Puebla because of sexual sin, lying, deception, idolatry, the worship of Satan, Freemason. I have seen it happen. I want you saints to understand one thing. He sends me now to Africa. 
and I started prophesying and preaching to the world behold repent repent behold the judgment of God is coming your way November 24th 2004 I was preaching all over the city of Nairobi he told me the father came in a mighty visitation that night and he put a thick cloud between myself and himself and by voice he was speaking to me he said I am asking you to go warn the Eastern religions to repent in Christ Jesus and I'll restore them the Eastern religions otherwise they shall know that the Lord God has spoken and he lifts me up on that November night 24th 2004 takes me into Asia and he shows me the tremendous earthquake that was splitting the ocean the Indian Ocean now and I'm telling you what a great sadness he shows me the kind of sadness the sadness that was going to grip the earth after the tsunami has taken place and I wanted to understand that the world today the church has fallen so much that the fivefold ministry is ruined when you come as a prophet and tell people that look it's going to happen there is a prophecy here for you the Lord has said this nobody believes you anymore because the church has fallen they did not believe me they said but the Lord promised never to hit the earth with floods anymore what are you talking about and I sent emails all over the world telling them about a mighty thing coming to hit the earth and then it happened sexual sin lying idolatry perversion worship of Satan these are the things that have driven God himself angry on December 14th in the same time frame December 14th the Lord came to me and showed me the altar of the Lord in the church in Kenya the Lord's altar in the Kenyan church a defiled altar a broken altar an altar that is ruined he showed me that altar and he asked me to go tell these people to repent in Christ Jesus and he would restore them he said tell the church in Kenya to restore my altar which has been defiled by sexual sin lying perverted worship idolatry of money and every single sickness every single perversion that you can think about every single sin in the church sexual sin drives God very angry we cannot commit sexual sin in the church Kenyans have died from AIDS HIV AIDS AIDS is not a disease you get from breathing air immorality in the church the altar of the Lord is defiled in the church in Kenya the Lord has shown me a lot that has happened in the church in Kenya and sexual sin in one of the gravest sins that the church could ever commit the altar of the Lord you cannot how dare you how can you commit sexual sin at the altar of the Lord you have just defiled that altar and he lifted it up and showed it to me in that mighty visitation of 14th of December 2004 he said tell these people to restore my altar which lies in ruins it has been ruined and the Lord told me tell these people and when he says these people that's the same thing he told me when he showed me the tsunami before it happened he said warn these people tell them to repent in Christ Jesus and I'll restore them before the tsunami hit and look at what happened there when it hit now he has warned Kenya also he says tell these people to repent in Christ Jesus and I'll restore them otherwise they shall know that the Lord God has spoken the defiled altar of the church in Kenya defiled by sexual sin at the pulpit at the altar 
the Lord has shown me some of the biggest churches in this country where there are Kesha nights. Nights of vigilant prayer and yet there is so much sexual orgy and sexual sin outside the church compound. People picking condoms in the morning. How could you do that in the church of the living God? The God of Moses. What is wrong in this land? Why have we done that? How come we've not understood that it's the same God of Moses, the God of judgment, the God that has no tolerance to sin? We have lied to people, put 2,000 shillings, the Lord wants to bless you. And in some of those congregations I've been there, the Lord sent me there, sat there, and they did not know I was sitting. Then the Lord told me, look, he's lying. I did not tell him to tell people to put 2,000 shilling, shillings in the envelopes and come. I have not said that. We have worshipped money. We have lied to the children of the Lord in this land. And then the Lord started showing me a lot of blood flowing through the land of Kenya. December last year. A lot of blood and a lot of blood, saints. Three mighty visitations, three mighty visions, three mighty nights. A lot of blood flowing through this land. And after that, he showed me the red horses that were running across the country. And they were leaving dead bodies as they went. And I woke up in the night, started praying and fasting for this country. And I went to the glossary of the Bible and found out what, where the red horses are and found out it meant judgment on the land. How could you drive the Lord angry in this land when he chose you, he loved you, blessed you? How come Kenya you cannot see that you've been a relative peace within a sea of turbulence? I want you to understand, saints, the Lord loves this land. Then he came back and showed me the earthquakes that were coming to hit this land. Now you have driven the Lord very angry. And this is what the Lord says to you now. Repent. 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 And I shall restore you. Repent in Christ Jesus. And I shall restore you. Otherwise you will know that the Lord God Almighty has spoken already. And the Lord showed me that earthquake four times. I want you to understand the book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 32. The Lord is sending Joseph to interpret the dream for the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And Joseph is telling the king what the Lord has told him. Tell the king that the reason the dream has been given to him in two forms, which means two times, is because the matter has been firmly decided in heaven by God and it will take place soon. I want the church in Kenya to realize that the Lord has shown me in different forms, more than three forms, the blood that's flowing through the land, the red horses running over the land, and the earthquakes coming to hit the land. That is more than two forms. That's three forms of judgment coming into the land. We're going to have to repent in Christ Jesus for the Lord to save us. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 29 to 32. All the way down to 38. And Elijah said to all the people of Israel, Come here to me. And all the people came to him and he repaired the old altar of the Lord which was in ruins, which had been broken. Saints, remember the old altar of the Lord, the old, old altar, not the new altar, old, old altar. That's why when I entered this country in that mighty visitation in the hotel, he showed me the right hand side of the right hand of Christ on the cross, and the nail was entering the, 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 the hand, and blood was flowing. And he made me feel the same pain Christ felt at Calvary. And he told me, Tell this church to repent and tell them to take the church back to the blood and the cross at Calvary. Saints. Elijah repaired the old altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. 
That is the primitive church that the Lord is asking us to go back to. The church that revered God. The church that respected holiness. The church that was Christ-centered, where Paul, Peter, James, John were apostles. Prophets were there involved too. There was no lying. How come many people in church are sitting there with HIV AIDS? How come now you are so much infested and infected with lots of evil spirits? A lot of people in the church in Kenya, after preaching, when they come to healing services that I conduct, you see how much evil spirits get out of them, those that are even talking. Because the altar of the Lord is defiled, God has the same way, same ways. He has the same style during the time of Ezekiel. The presence of the Lord left the temple. I want you to know, church in Kenya, that the presence of the Lord has left the church. How come the church in Kenya now has fallen to another gospel? What is wrong, church in Kenya? Who has bewitched you? How come now you are so quick to abandon the gospel that was given to you by our Lord and Savior Jesus when he left? The gospel of repentance and holiness. The blood of Jesus is about repentance and holiness because the Lord God Almighty is a holy God. Without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. But now I ask you, Give me a reason, Kenya. Give me a reason, Kenya. Give me a reason, Kenya, three times. I ask you why I should not judge you. Give me a reason. Mwaka iliyopita uh, tarehe 24 mwezi wa November, Bwana alionyesha hii tsunami ambayo ilifanyika Asia kabla hajafanyika. Na nilikuwa nikitembea hivi tu, naambia watu nani? Wacha tutubi dhambi zetu, wacha tutubi dhambi zetu inakuja kubwa sana itaguza Asia. You see, itaguza Asia. Nilikuwa nashaona tayari hata watu wamefariki wengi sana. Nasema Bwana kaniambia waambie hao watu watubi dhambi zao. Na sasa ashanionyesha tetemeko kubwa sana ambayo inakuja hapa Kenya. Moja itaguza Nairobi, nyingine itaguza Nakuru hapa na nyingine itaguza hii ya Nakuru inatoka Rift itaguza Nakuru na ile ya Nairobi itakuja kutoka Athi River hivi. Na nyingine ya Mombasa ya, ya, ya Kisumu Inaguza Lake Victoria, lafu inakishika ata Uganda huku. You've told Kenyans that an earthquake will hit this country. Where do you expect this earthquake to hit? Well, the Lord God Almighty showed me uh, the first earthquake coming all the way from Athi River and it will touch Nairobi. I have seen some of the roads dug deep into valleys and I've also seen a tsunami-like situation with a lot of water coming from underground and a lot of people dying. The same situation I saw before the tsunami happened when he showed me that a lot of people dead already. And I've seen that happen already. Muddy waters, high speed waters, the speed of jets knocking down buildings. And the other earthquake is going to be around the lake region, which is Lake Victoria. But that does affect even Uganda, Tanzania, and the neighboring countries. But it affects Kisumu tremendously. <laughs> you lift up your hand. Nyinyi zote nyota hamkokoka. Kwa nini hamkokoka jameni? Na unaona sikuizi Mungu tu. Yesu tu ndiye barabara ndiye njia. You see? Hata mmejaribu wenyewe haifanyikani. It cannot work anymore. You see? Unaona watu wengi sasa hata huko nyumbani huko nyanza watu wengi wameshafariki na ukimwi, you know? Unaona maisha yao sasa yamekuwa chini kabisa, you see? Watu wengi washafariki hata hapa, you know? Inafaa tutubu dhambi zetu tumpokee Yesu atusaidie hata kwa biashara zetu hapa. You see? Kenya ni nchi yetu. Bwana anapenda sana hii nchi. Simojua hivyo? Ampenda hii nchi sana sana. Hata ukiona vile ashatulinda, unaona watu wanatoka Somalia huko Sudan, watu wapo naangaika wanakuja hapa. Tunawasaidia. Na sisi ashatulinda kabisa. Hata wakati ule tuliomba, 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 tuliomba sana hata hizo mambo za tribal clashes pia zikaisha. You see? Sio kama sivyo huo ile wa Somalia wana bunduki wana wawana wana destroy kila kitu. Inafaa tutubu dhambi zetu, okay? So you expect many people will die in Kenya. 
a lot of people will die in Kenya if they don't repent. Again, remember every time the Lord shows me the earthquakes, the voice of the Father from my right hand side uh, says Jeremiah 10.10 10 and Isaiah 13.13, 13, which says the, Lord, when the anger of the Lord, when the Lord is angry, the heaven and earth tremble and no nation can endure his wrath. I have asked you, Michelle Obedi, do you have a reason? Is there anything that can make the Lord not judge you? All that has happened to the land. The sin in the church. I want you now. In the name of Jesus. Start lifting up your hands and pray for the leadership of the church. Now from your message I gathered that you said God was particularly angry at Kenya because of the sin inside the church. Is that right? Yeah, the Lord has shown me a lot of sin inside the altar of the church in Kenya. And the altar of the church in Kenya is a defiled altar. He is particularly angry at sexual sin. He brings me mighty visions of churches in Kenya and servants of the Lord in Kenya. And they are locked, some of them are locked, majority actually, locked into sexual sin. There is a lot of adultery. There is a lot of pornography. There's a lot of lying and there's a sexual mess. I've seen Keshanites turn into sexual orgies. We have sinned against the living God. We should pray and fast and repent. You have also mentioned that uh, many preachers in this country are preaching a false gospel. What do, you mean, what do you mean by a false gospel? The Lord has shown me that the gospel being preached in Kenya is what Paul referred to as another gospel. It is not the true doctrine of repentance and holiness. Remember, without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. The Lord has shown me that there's a lot of gospel prosperity here, money, materialism. They are preaching cars, big homes, and yet those things do not count in the kingdom of God. So that's why a lot of people, the church itself has drifted away from the gospel of holiness and, and repentance. And for which, for which reason now, they cannot even receive my message because this message of, 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 of repentance and holiness rebukes sin and they find that I am piercing them. It is stinging to them. It's not palatable. It's not sensational to them. It's not sweet to their flesh. That's why they are preaching another gospel which is sensational to their flesh. So you mean all these pastors and bishops and preachers in Kenya and elsewhere in the world who are preaching that God will bless us, that God will give us money, God will give us good jobs, God will give us good cars. Are they lying? Thank you. I want you to understand that the true gospel is the gospel of repentance and holiness, especially now that Jesus is coming back. And just like I said, he has shown me his mighty second coming, how it will take place, the way it will happen. And I want you to understand that just like Paul said, another gospel. That means they are preaching a gospel that does not, does not belong to Jesus, does not belong to the Lord. And the implication here is this. Majority of the servants have fallen. They are not preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's why they are bringing the church all the way down with themselves. Now whose gospel are they preaching then if it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ? They mention Jesus quite a lot in their preachings and they shout hallelujah and they speak in tongues. You mean all this is not from Christ? I want you to understand, my brother, I want you to understand that the devil is a liar. What the devil has done is that he has entered inside the church and perverted the gospel and made sin. People are comfortable with sin in the church. That's why there's so much AIDS, HIV AIDS in the church. You wonder how could there be AIDS in the church? The same God of Moses, the same creator and the maker of heaven and earth, created the gold and the diamond and the silver and the bronze and the petroleum under the earth. And so he still, he still can give us prosperity. His version of prosperity, when we worship him, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, its holiness. And all these things shall be added unto you, the true prosperity. But when you do what the Kenyan church is doing, to run to prosperity, to big cars and homes and money, then you drift away from the true gospel of repentance and holiness. No wonder they've not received this message. And yet judgment is coming to this land. So whose gospel are they preaching, brother? There are only two types of anointing on earth. The first one is the anointing of our Lord and Savior Jesus that will fall on a servant that is called to serve. 
and the other anointing comes from the devil. If one is preaching a gospel, if a church, like the Kenyan church, is preaching a gospel, the church in Kenya is preaching a gospel right now, which is far from, all, from, from, from repentance and holiness. It's a gospel of prosperity. That means they're preaching the gospel of the devil. The gospel that is bent on lying to people. No wonder sexual sin has entered church. No wonder women do not even know how to dress when they enter into the house of the Lord these days. Tumbo cuts, hanging breasts, they're exposing their breasts. How come we don't understand 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 12 on? That your body is the holy tabernacle of the Lord. How can you bring the same dressings of the world into the church? That means they're preaching the outer court gospel. They're preaching the gospel of the world, of the devil. That's where the church in Kenya is. Okay, we need to repent, you know. I so, repent every evening, every time. Every time. Every time, always. Hallelujah, that is very good. You know why you repent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because Jesus saved me. Hey. Uh, maybe come up. When I ask for me, I can't be asked money. Asante sana. Sasa ina, inafaa pia tutubu dhambi zetu kwa kuhusu mambo ambayo matendeka hapa nchini. Kwa like nakuru here there is Freemason here watu wengine they are worshiping the devil, Satan, okay? You see, unafaa tutubu. Let me pray for you right now before all we night go. we were praying and there was repentance going on, millions millions of people repenting the whole night. But God is looking for the whole nation to come back to repentance. And the plan is to lead this nation into a wave of repentance, to bring them back to the Lord, Jehovah Jireh, back to El Shaddai, back to Adonai, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so he can restore you, Kenya. He loves you. Remember that. 